Saturday morning. Uh, please all stand and do the scripture reading. It's coming from Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 13. It's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Can y'all get it? Say amen. Amen. Okay, it says, <clears throat> Wherefore, take unto you the whole form of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil days, and having done all to stand. Amen. 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 Today, more than we ever believe in prayer, all the things that's going on in this world and the things that's happening uh, in our sight. We're living in the last days. I mean, I know we hear this all the time, right? Amen. We should believe now that we're living in the last days and Satan has uh, stepped up his attack on us. Amen? Amen. So we just want to pray uh, this morning. Uh, if anyone wants to come down this morning, as we uh, pray this morning, and, and if you want to uh, welcome to come down uh, to the front as we pray this morning. <laughs> God been good to us, amen? amen. We're above ground today, amen? amen? A lot of people didn't wake up this morning. Yes, sir. You know, and so we still have another chance of life. Not just this life, but eternal life. Amen. And if you have prayer requests, you know, just uh, pray silently for your prayer request. That's all. Like, you want an outward prayer request for the church today? Lord, once again, we thank you for this blessing for the Sabbath and the Lord, upon us. Dear Lord, we thank you for life, for strength, and for health. Well, you didn't have to wake us up this morning, this morning, Lord, but you decided that you would, dear Lord. Not just for our own goals, not just to see what we want to see, but dear Lord, you've given us another chance, dear Lord. Another chance to get together. For if we were to die last night, dear Lord, can we say that we would be ready to make it to the kingdom? So, dear Lord, you know each and every one of us, so you gave us that chance. So we're thanking you for that. We're thanking you for your goodness and for your mercies. Dear Lord, I know we always come and asking for things from you, but dear Lord, this morning we're just going to be thankful. Amen. We're going to be thankful that we that we have a place to live. We're going to be thankful that we have a part of job. We're going to be thankful that we have a job. We're just going to be thankful that we have food. We're just going to be thankful that we have sight. We're going to be thankful, dear Lord, that we can walk. Dear Lord, we're going to be thankful that we're not in the hospital, dear Lord, this morning. Lord, we're just going to be just be thankful because of who you are. We're going to be thankful that you came down to this earth and, dear Lord, that you died for our sins, dear Heavenly Father. We're going to be thankful that you prepared a heaven for us, dear Lord, that, that is for free, dear Lord, and that, and that one day soon you're coming back to, to get all your children who are people that have been obedient to your word. So we're thankful for that. And, Lord, we can go on and on and on for all the many blessings that you have bestowed on us, dear Lord. And, and we are truly thankful. And so, Lord, this morning, we ask that you continue to, to we, we're so thankful that, Lord, that Sister Turner went home for the hospital Amen. this morning. And so continue to heal her body and make her well and bring her back soon. Dear Lord, we're thankful for Sister Shane, dear Lord, who is recovering also, dear Lord. Continue to heal her body. And dear Lord, many others who are in the bulletin that I don't know the names of, dear Lord, that are, that, that are recovering from sickness and illness, dear Lord. We're thankful for that, dear Heavenly Father. And so, Lord, you just made good to us. And so we're just here to say thank you. Thank you this morning, and we're just here to praise your holy name, your Lord, today. Because you're all worthy and, and, and honored to be praised, dear Heavenly Father. For you are King of kings and Lord of lords. And so, Lord, Lord there's none other better than you, dear Heavenly Father. So, Lord, as we continue to go throughout this uh, 11 o'clock divine service, dear Lord, each and every person that came down to the altar, dear Lord, this morning, dear Lord, I don't know what they came down for, dear Lord, but the good thing is that you know, and you're the only one that needs to know. So then, Heavenly Father, answer their prayer request, dear Heavenly Father. And, and, and just save them and their families, dear Lord. That's all we're asking, the Lord, that we can be saved. When it's all said and done, we just want to be saved and make it to that uh, kingdom of you. So continue to bless this service. It's my prayer, Son's precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
like this. We're supposed to be like this. We like reading like this. Put it up. It's supposed to be good. This is Sabbath. I mean, in the Lord's house there. God has blessed us today to be here, right? Amen. All right. I just have a couple of questions for y'all a little bit. Um, how many of us have favorite animals? Raise your hand. All right. Just what you're doing. I can't hear you. A panda? What was your favorite Thank you. 
Like the receptions, Jerry receptions going to cyber school, like we plan for next year. Yeah. Like we all be here right. next year. Well, there's an enemy out here each and every day trying to take our lives away. Amen? Yeah. So we, if we believe that the devil is real, we need to start acting like he's real. Yeah. We need to start living yeah. like he's real. Right. right? So let's go to our, my, this, this morning, my, my, my topic this morning is living in the cyber zone. And you will get that as we go from the living in the cyber zone. And our text for this morning is found in Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to read verses 10 through 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. And don't worry, my sermons are not long. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> so don't go off for a restroom, right? You may miss it. <laughs> <laughs> so we there again. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. And I'm reading your hearing, and it says, and I'm reading from the New King's King version, amen. And it says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Pull on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of who? Yeah. Or the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have it done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girt your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with the all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen? Amen. So we have to do something. You told me that you believe in the devil, so we have to do something each and every day. We need to put on the armor of God. Amen? Amen. We need to pray. Amen? Amen. And so I'm, as I started living in the cycle zone, this happened 17 years ago. So those of you who are under 17 years of age, you're not going to remember, you're not going to know this story. Not, well, if you five years are, are older, you're still not going to remember. But as I go along, the ones who are older will remember. It was in October 2002, during a three-week period, all that all this took place. And man is minding his own business, mowing his grass, and he is shot to death. Another comes out of a restaurant with his wife, it would be their last meal together. They were minding their own business and suddenly he was shot. A 13-year-old boy is wounded after he arrived at school. A man stood at the top of the stairs of his own bus and was taken wounded. And the story goes on. They didn't know. They, they didn't know that they were, they didn't know they were next on the sniper's head list. Their names were Kenneth Bridges, James Buchanan, Pascal Charlie, Lika Franklin. Lori Ann Lewis Rivera, James Martin, Dean Myers, Sammy Ramos, and Prim Ray. These are nine of the ten names of those people whose lives were cut short by a sniper from the police named John Allen Mohammed. Anyone remember that? Yes. In 2002, the sniper that when it shot all these people dead. Amen. As the events of this unravel, all of America begin wishing and praying that the personal person responsible for these unnecessary these unnecessary slaves will be caught. I know I was. People were praying. This man was out shooting people. That's the people were just going about their own business. All of a sudden, you're shot in the head. And no one knew where this was coming from. And all of America started thinking the same. And since no one at, at one time could put a face or name to the source of all these killings, the news media started to look at a different angle. And this particular angle became a seed that, gener that generated what God wants us to know today. The news, instead of talking about the victims, this story was, was about those who remain. We see what it's like to live in a cyber zone. What is it like to live in fear? You can't even go to the gas station, or stand in the parking lot, or sit by the window in the restaurant. What is it like to live in a cyber zone? After all, after all we live in Amber Rose. We don't live in Boyd, Maryland, Washington, D.C., where this took place. So could you imagine living back there at this time in 2002, and, and, and you were in the sniper zone, you know? Could you imagine that happening here in Amarillo? 
Well, in order to really understand this thing, one has to look at the recent historical picture of what was going on before and why people were so such an impact. Just in the DC area alone, first there was a question of all the hijackers ramming a plane into the Pentagon. Remember that? So this is all happening in the same city, right? Then there was the uppercut and traps attacks. That thing shut down less than buildings and post office killed two DC era residents. Now after those fears have subsided, here comes this cycle. After all this is going on, now we got a sniper that comes on scene. So you are being panicked too, right? All these things are happening that's going on. This plane ran into the Pentagon. You know, people uh, 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 sending these bills and stuff to the, to the federal buildings. People are dying, all this stuff going on. So people were in fear, amen? The devil is, is wrong, and you say to believe the devil? This is all part of the devil's work that's going amen. on. Amen. Yeah. Now, after all those fears have subsided, here comes this sniper. And once again, every person start their own personal panic attack. One article recites that mental health experts say such a current terror can leave people in a battle community hanging on their psychological ropes. One concerned reality resident spoke up and, and testified, said, I feel this is like a war zone we're living in. President Bush is talking about fighting Iraq, and we have a war in this country he needs to deal with. Amen? So they, they were talking about wars going on, and people were saying, we got war going on right here. Right here and right there. And I, I think we just had the same thing going on right here and down the road, right? There's a war going on. We have to be concerned with each and every day right now. But that's not all. What is it like living in the sniper zone? This is what these people felt like here. Shopping attendance had dramatically decreased. People wasn't going shopping before. Business went into a slump. People started losing business. Uh, restaurants had reduced employee schedules. People wasn't going to work, right? Motors avoid filling their tanks at gas stations where they might be vulnerable because they never used to have a the gas station. So people were, you know, people went near, uh, you know, where this person was shot, they wasn't even going to go fill up at that gas station. Uh, one school very close to the site of the shooting had an attendance reduction of 95%. Only 5% of all the students came to the school. If you put yourself in that place, would you let your kids go to a school that day? Anymore, this sniper is on the loose. <coughs> He's on the loose. You know, the more you look and the more you read and research this particular news story, you find yourself saying, Lord, it's no joke to be able to get up in the morning and come back home that same night. Yes. Amen. Lord, I don't know if look. So that's so true. We live in this sniper is going on, so we're blessed to get up every morning. And come back home that same night. You don't know when your last day gonna be. We live in a cyber zone too, amen. Whether we realize or not, we are all living in a cyber zone. We are all being gunned down in our streets on a daily basis. We are all living in a dangerous world. There's somebody taking pot shots at the children of God every day. None of our children are safe anymore. Any day of the week can be our last day on earth. There is another bad man on the loose, and he's on a deranged mission of destruction. And he too has a hit list. That's why the Bible says in Revelation 12, 12, roll to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down to you at a great wrath, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. And 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil says, is as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. And that's why Jesus told Peter in Luke 22, 31, Simon, Simon, behold, as it look what is happening in the world and relate to what I am saying, Simon, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as sweet, that he may kill you. So we have the sniper going, we have the same sniper that was in Maryland, is here right now, after us each and every day. Amen? And this sniper, and this sniper is so bad. So Jesus tells Simon some encouraging words. He says, but I have prayed for thee. Anytime Jesus prays, I know there's a miracle coming my way. Amen. Amen. What is Jesus praying about? That your faith fail not. Amen. And even though you're not converted, even though you compromised in your dying address, even though I have to sometimes bend your arm for you to be faithful in your stewardship, even though I have to stop on my ears from all that separate music, music you listen to, yeah. one day you're going to get converted. And when you get converted, verted, Jesus tells Peter, strengthen the breath. Amen. 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 So, when God prays and is praying for us, we have someone who is praying for us that, that we need, amen? amen? Who is there for us to take care of us and who's going to uh, watch after us. Amen. But then the devil is particularly mad and angry 
at God's children. Amen? Amen. At his true church. Amen. And he's taking aim and frying pot chops at the children of God. That's why God warned us about in Revelation 12 to 17, which says, And the dragon was walking with the woman, and would to make war with the women of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, he's mad at the church, amen? Yeah. And since he can't get to Jesus, since he lost at the flood mm. and lost at the cross, yeah. and since he even knows that he's going to lose the final round mm. at the close of the millennium, then he, at the very least, must make sure he takes some of God's true children with him. Right. We don't want to be on that side. Amen. So that's why we got to live for the Lord each and every day. Don't be on the side. God is, the devil is, he's a sniper. of are sort of taking shots each and every day. You know, you know, he's trying to get you when you're not ready. Amen. So we need to stay focused and stay ready each and every day. How do we do that? Read the word of God. Pray. You know, come out to meetings, you know. I know we can't all come to prayer meetings. We all can't come to Tuesday night. But when you can, come. Amen. There's a blessing in it. God says to, God says to come together. Why does he say to come together? So we can strengthen each other. Amen. Amen. You can't be strengthened out on your jobs with the people that you work with. Amen. Amen. You need to be strengthened by people that believe in the same thing that you believe. Amen. 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 You can't be certain by someone who's sitting there cussing all day long and doing things and stuff. Now, amen? Come get to the church with people that, that believe the same thing that you believe in. Come get your strength from the church. And that's what God's people say. Oh, I don't want to go to church. Some people, all day, this, this, and that. So you want to be out there with them? What are they doing for you, amen? God is here to give us a message, and that is to follow them, amen? And so that's why it's so important. He set this, this special day apart, not for just any reason. If he set it apart and we can come and, 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 and be in his presence, he says, I set this day apart for you. Yeah. And so that's why we're here today. Amen? Amen. So we have that sniper on the loose, right? Yeah. And this man, John, has been having some similar traits to this other sniper named Satan, which are worthy of note. Here it is. First, he was a member of the United States Army, this guy that John had been having, in which he was taught to save and protect civilian lives, not take them. He has, he has turned on the very people he swore to protect. Similarly, Satan, the other sniper, was also a member of God's army, Heavenly Angels, who was created as an angel to save and protect our lives, not destroy them. And he too has turned on the very people he was created by God to help save and protect. So we have this sniper that was on those seats just like Satan, right? Take the lives of God's people, amen? amen. Secondly, the sniper received his marksmanship badge with Esper Graydon. The highest of three ratings in the use of the M16 rifle. Similarly, Satan has a masterful war chest also. Uh, and, and evidence shows he is a marksman that shoots with deadly force. Yeah. How do I know? People are dying to Christ's grace on a daily basis. Yeah. Families are dysfunctional. Right. Diseases are incurable. Yeah. Inflation seems unstoppable. Employment is ever continual. Uh, sexuality is downright immoral. Immorality is uncontrollable, and day body has become perpetual. So Satan has the same arsenal. This guy using him to kill everybody, but what does Satan do? He's using the daily lives that we live. He's gunning us down at each and every point in our own spiritual lives. That's what he's gunning us down here. Because we don't want to study. Because we don't want to pray. Because we don't want to be a witness. Because we don't want to hear what the preacher has to say. Because we just don't want to, we just don't want to change our lives, basically. We don't, we don't want to change, you know. Oh, no, I can't do that. Well, I'm used to doing this, you know. Well, I've been brought up this way. You know, we don't want to change. And that's all about it. Change, change, change. Because the Bible is about change. The Bible changes. Yeah. That's what the Bible does. You read the Word of God and you become changed. You don't become changed. Then you, not, then you didn't ask for the Holy Spirit when you start reading the Word of God so that you can be changed. And that's what you got to do. Why do we have so many churches? Why do we have so many different places? Uh, when people ask, why do we have so many churches so many different places? Because people don't ask for the Holy Spirit when they read the Word of God. And people don't want change. People don't want to change their lives. You know, it ain't about, you know, you being the seventh day Adventist, because the seventh day Adventist, but you're going to be saved. You know? No, it's about being obedient to God. That's what it's about. You be obedient to God, you will serve on the right day. So 
So that's what it's about. It ain't nothing about, you know, this religion, that religion. I've been brought up in this church all my life. That don't mean I was going to be saved, right? I have to accept it for myself. I have to read the word of God. And that's what we don't want to do. We want to listen to the preacher, what he got to say. And he can be telling you anything. And which a lot of them do. And so that's what you're basing your faith off of. That's how you're going to be saved. You're not going to be saved like that. No one's going to be saved like that. We got to study for ourselves to show our own to show ourselves approved, amen? amen? And until we do that, we're just not going to make it. So we have a sniper on the loose. We believe in the devil. He's on the loose. He, he's after a, He does not sleep. No. Right? <coughs> we have to go to sleep to get rest. He doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. We forget that he was a former angel. He didn't lose none of his powers. No. Amen. But we think we can go up against him. No. We think that we Superman. We can go up against Satan, right? But he's the most powerful. Then we got angels down here, fallen angels. Just as powerful, just as powerful. So you wonder why things go on the earth, you know? How can a person have to just like to kill someone? How can you get the mentality of that? Because Satan, and we call, and the doctors and them call all these different types of, of things that's going on. They got all types of names for them. But you know what the Bible calls them? Huh? It's sin, and it was nothing but evil demonic uh, beings in them, right? That's all it is. We don't need no names for them. It's Satan. It's the devil. That's the only name we need to put to. Let's not make excuses for these people. Let's not make things. It's the devil. It's the devil, devil down here on this earth because who earth is it? Who earth is it? God. It's God's, but who came down to take care of it? It's the devil. It's Satan, right? It's Satan, but God, but if we go to God, if we go to God, if we go to God, he can take care of us in this earth. Amen? And we don't have to worry about this sniper uh, running around here. Amen? And, if we, and we won't worry about that at all. So uh, what could they do? What could these people do with such a damn man running around? Paranoid in a, in a fear of rare rapid until this individual was caught. Well, what are we to do until this other bad man gets caught? Well, he's still running around down the road, seeking who he may devour. How shall we live in the cypher zone? I don't know about you, but I get encouraged just reading the promises of God. Well, we need to know at times like these, I get comfort in knowing the angel of the Lord is camping around about them that fear him and deliver them. I get encouraged to know that every time I leave the house, I can hear the text that says, The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. It's a blessing here to hear Jesus say, I will not leave thee nor forsake thee. And when my world is upside down, I don't know where to go. I am relieved to know that God is our reference and strength and very present help in our times of trouble. Amen. Amen. So we need to go and learn these tests and learn these promises. We need to know where to go. If you, if you know where to go, if you're going on the trip, you you, you plan it out, right? Yeah. yeah. But you say you want to heaven, but you ain't planning on nothing. You don't even know what heaven is. Most of you don't even know what heaven's about. Most of you don't even know uh, what's in heaven. Oh, we're just going to be playing hearts. That ain't what my Bible said. My arms that we're just going to be playing hearts. You know? You you know that you're going to have your own mansion. Not one but two. Do you know that you're going to be walking on streets of gold? Amen. Do you know you're going to be wishing from Sabbath Sabbath with Jesus Christ himself? You ain't going to hear me preach, but hear him preach. Amen. The greatest preacher of all who saved many souls. Amen. So, you know, that you don't know what heaven's going to be like, how you going? You better open up the word of God so that you can know what heaven is like. And to you open it up, you can, no one can save you but yourself. Your parents and everybody pray for you, but you have to do the work. You have to give it to the word of God. You have to save yourself. And it's only through Jesus Christ, it's only through opening up the word of God that you can do that. Amen. So, and better yet, God has not allowed us to live in the sniper zone without protection. Amen. Amen. Not only do angels keep charge over us, and not only is Jesus the good shepherd who watches over his sheep by day and night, there's something else that's included in God's arsenal and heavenly protection. And then we read that in Ephesians 6, 13, which says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in this evil day, and having done all to stand. So you got to take up the whole armor of God. Amen. Amen. You can't take up half of it. You can't take up a quarter of it. You can't have to take up three quarters of it. You got to take up the whole armor of God. He's, and the whole armor of God is right here. Yeah. You just can't pull this out on Sabbath. You know, if, you, if you just pull this out on Sabbath, you in the sniper zone. Yeah. 
You know, the devil, that means the devil is, is, is there and he's ready to attack you. He can attack you. You're in the sniper zone. You don't want to be in the sniper zone. You don't want to be afraid like these people were. They were afraid to go out. As Christians, we should not be afraid of anything. Even if there is a sniper in this area, as Christians, we should not be afraid of anything. Why? Because we got God. Because, because we got guardian angels. But guess what? If you don't ask the Lord, it is to go with you in the morning. Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. And if you're not a Christian, you know, you say, oh, we're going to places where we shouldn't be. Oh, yeah. And you don't you know where the guardian angels at. And you didn't go in there, would you? <laughs> right? So we need to do what we're supposed to do. Amen. Amen. And we need to put on a whole armor of God and stand. Stand against the wiles of the devil. He has so much he's throwing out of us. Out of our kids, out of our youth. All the different drugs, all the different things that happen. You know, like my sister just told me yesterday, she works at a group home, and she said last week I had this girl come in, and we was at the store and everything, and got everything she needed, and she ate wall that, uh, that was like on a Friday, she ate wall that Saturday night, she took off. And then my sister hears the next uh, Monday that she's dead. Because she took some drugs. Right, and her friends, guess what her friends did? Threw her on the front line. She took, she took some deadly drugs and she died. And she ate walk. The wild Satan is attacking, right? He's, the sniper is out. The sniper is out. Yeah. He's out each and every day. He's attacked our young kids with all these drugs, yeah. with all these, these, va these, these, yeah. these vapors, yeah. this marijuana, and this, you know, oh, marijuana don't do nothing, you know. I don't know. It, make, it affects your brain, right? Yeah. Brain, so it, it, it messes you up. So young kids, don't let, don't let these drugs, don't let these, you know, you can be a witness too. You don't have to do all these type of things, you know. I know we always hear testimonies of how people uh, uh, that came off of drugs and that did, you know, and now they come back. But you don't have to <coughs> give no testimony that you never did. Right. That's my testimony. My testimony, my testimony is that I never went out there and did none of them things, right? So you can give that testimony, you know. But that's a powerful testimony too. Stay away. You don't, you don't want that chance to try to make it back. <laughs> and hope that you make it back. You know what I'm saying? You may not make it back. They may, they may cast us this small to that small for everyone. Amen? Amen. So we want to be ready at all times. Let's get out of this. Let's not be in the sniper zone. Amen? Amen. Because if we get caught in the sniper zone, you know, we will lose our life. You know that? that there's uh, one sniper, this sniper, John Mahal Allen, he died by lethal jet. Lethal injection in March 9, 2004. This other sniper, he will die at the second coming of Christ by yes. fire and yes. yes. So, what we have to do, stand Amen. to the end. Amen. 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 Amen.
Worship the Father, we thank you for Jesus. And Lord, we want to thank you for this blessed Sabbath day, Lord. We thank you for the words that you have given our other journals, Lord, to present to your people. We ask you, Lord, that we take the message, Lord, and to learn from you. And be now for the world for all things. We thank you for those that are here today and those that are able to come as well. Again, we pray for our sick and shut and those around the world who struggle day to day. We ask the Lord Jesus to remember each and every one. Protect us as we leave, only to return us again. That be our prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 You may be seated. <laughs>